Hey everybody, in this tutorial we're going to take a look at exporting props and scenes into Photoshop. So this is the kind of process that you want to follow if you have a nice scene that you've created or a nice prop that you've created in uh, Crazy Talk Animator and you want to export it to Photoshop for use in uh, any other final projects, uh, commercial or educational projects, whatever, what have you. Uh, I'll show you the process to do that uh, as we move along here. Okay, so first off let's talk about exporting props. So I'm going to go to my props tab here and under animated uh, props here we have a couple of embedded animated props with Crazy Talk Animator. Let's just throw in this laptop here. Just double click on that and zoom in on it. All right, center it. Now everything within this viewing area here, you can see this blue rectangle, everything within this area is what's going to be exported when we export it into Photoshop and I'll show you in just a moment here. So since this is an animated prop, we can right click on it and there's an action menu. We can have a bunch of animations like laptop open here and uh, all sorts of other stuff. Okay, and uh, let's throw in another uh, element here as well, this light bulb. I'm just going to click and drag this light bulb onto the laptop there. Let's just uh, resize it a little bit further down so you can have, uh, you know, use this for a nice presentation uh, in uh, whatever capacity you need. Uh, you can notice when I move the light bulb there's a green line behind it. That's because we're at frame 27 here and it's going to create an animation. Uh, if I want to uh, get rid of that, I can just right click on the light bulb and select remove object animation and then we'll just have this light bulb right here. Um, but the problem is that light bulb is still there when we have uh, frame one at the beginning of the animation. So we want to make the light bulb invisible until the screen opens. So what we can do is just change the opacity down to zero for the light bulb. And then let's go to a frame here where the uh, laptop is in the process of opening, maybe frame 13. And what I like to do is I'm kind of lazy. I just go to opacity and, you know, pump it up to like a value, of really small value, like four will do. Okay. And then I'll go a few frames ahead when it's finished, 20, and then we'll just change the opacity to 100. Now, if I press F3 and go into the timeline here, uh, with my light bulb selected, if I have object related track selected, it'll open up the light bulb track here and I can go to opacity and you can see those keyframes that I just added there. So right here, it'll be invisible from here to here and then zoop, it'll slowly appear on our scene. If I press space to play back, there you go. I can increase or decrease that uh, time for it to appear. Transition time, you can make it really fast or make it a little bit slower by uh, dragging that uh, a little bit further back. Okay, and then when uh, the light bulb finally appears, we can right click on the light bulb since it is an animated prop and go to action menu and something like light bulb flashing. Okay, and then we have this cool looking uh, flashing light bulb. If we go to the motion track, we can see the uh, clip right there. Zoop. All right. And uh, okay, so say for example, we had this uh, frame right here, frame 62, and we wanted to export this into Photoshop for use in any uh, one of our professional projects or something like a business presentation. Well, what we can do is uh, just make sure everything in our scene uh, is within this little blue viewing area here, and then go up to render and export PSD file. And I'm going to choose the default resolution here for uh, CTA. Um, we're just going to go and enter in uh, a value of 3840. Pretty good resolution to have. The higher resolution you have, the better in, in most cases. Now there's a couple of options here. Under Export by Object Group, you have the option to retain original layers or flatten into one layer. Now if you retain original layers, let's go to the, to the uh, uh, Sprite Editor here really quickly. And you can see that this sprite is actually made up of a number of different elements. And when you export this into a PSD file, all these different elements in this sprite are going to export as different layers within the light bulb group. Okay, so keep that in mind. And same thing goes with the uh, keyboard. We have the screen and everything. Uh, so let's go ahead and uh, render that one more time. Export PSD file and retain original layer. So let's export it. And let's just export it to our desktop. We'll call it uh, laptop. Okay, since we're being really creative today. And uh, there you go. So I'm going to press, uh, go down to my desktop here and just load up laptop. And there you have it. So let's take a look at the uh, groups on the right here. So under light bulb, you can see, like I mentioned, all those different beams of light have their own individual layers within the light bulb groups. So you can modify those um, separately or you can modify them all together. And within the laptop as well, uh, you know, we have the word which, which aren't showing up in the screen at this point here at that frame. So you don't have to worry about those. They'll just be like dummy objects. Uh, the keyboard, laptop, and dummy again. Uh, you don't need that. And screen. You can modify these all if you want as well. But let's take a look at what happens if we export as a flattened uh, image there. So, or flatten rather into one layer. So let's do the same thing, uh, but choose flatten into one layer. 
let's call it a laptop. Oops, laptop two. Okay, and go into our desktop and just load up laptop two here. And now you can see if I go into the groups, there's just one single layer. And each prop is just basically its own layer. It's all been flattened into a single layer in Photoshop here. And then you can go ahead and do something like choose the light bulb and uh, do something like a gradient overlay because you can do some really cool looking effects. Um, you know, maybe choose something like a, one of these kind of cool looking effects here. You can just press the right key once you have it selected to run through all these and uh, you know modify them. I think this hard mix one looks kind of cool. You get a nice uh, saturated gradient uh, moving up like that. Anyways, you can just modify all those and uh, press enter when you're done. Uh, same thing with the laptop. You can just select the laptop by itself. Now with the laptop, you'd probably want to have uh, separate layers. You'd probably want to export those as separate uh, group layers because um, you want to export, you know, change the color of the keys separately. Um, but you can also do something like, you know, just uh, use the fill here and let's choose like blue maybe and just, you know, fill into each individual key there as well. Um, maybe half your keyboard is blue and the other half is gray or whatever like that. And then you can choose something like, a, well, I don't know, let's choose a black color. We can make a black laptop here, change the uh, keys to black and there you go. So we have a cool looking uh, maybe like gaming type laptop now okay so this is uh, you know all the fun stuff you can do in Photoshop I'm not a Photoshop pro by any stretch of the imagination but uh, you know it's a couple of cool things you can do um, using these uh, Photoshop tools all right let's close these down now I don't need to uh, save them at this point uh, what I'm going to show you now is how to export uh, complete scenes in crazy talk animator so let's go ahead and go to our project tab here and under project templates under demo we'll have a bunch of Crazy Talk Animator demo scenes here. I'm going to go all the way down to this camera motion curves one. We don't need to save our current project here. Uh, so once this loads up, I'll just uh, play through it real quick for you here. Um, trans camera transitions don't have anything really to do with this tutorial. I just kind of wanted to show you. It's kind of a funny little scene here. I guess a nice smooth camera movement. And uh, the reason I chose this is because there's camera movement. And like I mentioned before, whatever is within the rectangle, in this case it's a red rectangle because record mode is on, whatever is within that rectangle is the only stuff that's going to be exported to your PSD file. A little kind of a creeper look there, hide back behind the bushes. All right, so um, what we're going to do is I'm going to export a couple of scenes here. So I'm going to click and drag in the uh, timeline here. Uh, let's just go the entire scene, like this scene right here, okay? Now, uh, like I mentioned before, uh, everything within this rectangle is going to be exported. So if I go to render, uh, export PSD file, uh, let's choose a that high resolution again, uh, 3840 by 2160. Now if we retain original images, this might take a while, but basically let's just call it beach scene. All right. Basically every little element of every sprite in this entire scene is going to be uh, as a separate layer in Photoshop and there's going to be a whole bunch of different groups here so you can see it's taken a little bit of a long time to export because it's going to be a fairly big uh, PSD file with a lot of data uh, loaded in there. I'm going to show you uh, later if we, if we flatten into a single image uh, what it'll look like here. All right so we're in the home stretch there. All right let's go to our desktop and find our beach scene here. It's even going to take a while to load up there and you can see we have all kinds of different layers here. If we have move and auto select selected, we can, you know, move individual body parts, even like the torso of the character, uh, the crab, we can move the body separately. You know, every little sprite, like I mentioned, every element of every sprite you can modify differently. And if we uh, zoom in on little Mr. Krabby here, let's just uh, focus on him here. You know, we can do uh, different effects, different parts of the body. Uh, if we want to, you know, change his body to a different color, we can just use like a color overlay and give him a blue body for, you know, if he's like a weird looking crab, maybe just lighten the body up a little bit, uh, darken it, uh, you know, what have you. And uh, we can also, you know, move these legs all separately and the claws separately as well. Ah, where's my claws? All right. Anyway, so just kind of going to show you how detailed you can get. Uh, so, you, you know, you wanted to use this scene for, uh, you know, some sort of tourist uh, poster or something. You can put like holiday in Bali or something across the top. And, uh, you know, have fun with that and modify it to your heart's content. All right, let's take a look now at, uh, um, if I go back to the uh, Crazy Talk animator here, let's go a little bit further. Um, 
we don't, we don't want that scene. Let's have the scene of the guy uh, happily fishing on his boat here. Now, if I export this scene, we're going to just have everything that's within this red rectangle here. So I go to render here and uh, export PSD file. And let's just uh, flatten this into a single layer here. Okay, and we'll just call it uh, Dude Fishing. Okay, being very descriptive with my naming here. And we'll just load in Dude Fishing here. A very quick and easy PSD file. You'll see every group only has a single layer in it. Everything's been flattened. So there's our uh, boat as a separate layer. There's our dude as a separate layer. Yay! All right, and uh, everything can be modified separately there. Whatever you want to do with it. Uh, and again, if you export it with group layers, we'll have the character's body all separate pieces and everything like that. That's really all I wanted to show you here guys today. Hopefully you learned a lot. Uh, thanks so much for watching and make sure you check out our other videos on our YouTube channel and our forums over at forum.reillusion.com and I'll see you in the next video.